All right, everyone, I want to welcome you to another episode of the Elite Junior Profiles podcast. My name is Lane Houck, and together with my partner in crime, Paul Peckman, we're going to be your tour guides for the next 45 or 60 minutes. Paul, why don't you take the wheel and introduce our special guest for today's episode? All right, Lane, always a pleasure to be with you, my buddy. Um, sure. Today, we have a special guest here, a good friend of mine, a guy I had the pleasure of spending a couple of years behind the bench with. Uh, Tim Kirkostas is with us here, the head coach of the NCDC of the USPHL uh, Islanders Hockey Club team, and uh, also the assistant captain of the 2000 National Championship team at Norwich University. Timmy, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, Paul. Thanks for having me. Welcome, coach. Thank you. Well, let me, let me start off right off the bat here. I, I got an interesting tidbit about you that you are actually the leading scorer of the Norwich's 2001 soccer team. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. So you're a multi-sport guy in college. Oh. You were, you were a multi-sport guy? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, um, you know, I was a soccer player, uh, you know, first before I was a hockey player. And, um, you know, I, I go, growing up on Long Island, as you know, uh, you know, the Islanders won their four Stanley Cups in the 80s. And, you know, everybody was really big into, uh, into hockey. And, you know, I kind of made the switch from soccer to hockey uh, when I was in, you know, middle school. You know, I started a lot later than, uh, um, you know, a lot of, you know, the guys I ended up playing with uh, later on in high school and in juniors. Uh, but, you know, the soccer background, you know, really helped me. You know, being a two-sport athlete, um, you know, I, I thought it was, a, it was an easy transition, um, you know, once I decided to go full-time on hockey, the fact that I had that background in soccer. And, you know, the funny joke was my mom and dad always said I, I had probably five times as many offers for college for soccer than I did hockey. And, you know, I ended up starting off at Iona Division One, and then, you know, transferred up to uh, Norwich uh, just in time for the national championship there. And, you know, I wanted to play my junior year, you know, Division Three, um, you know, hockey, um, starts a little bit later than Division One. You know, we started, uh, you know, late October, early uh, November, and the soccer season is August to, you know, mid-October. So I was pressuring the coach, you know, my junior year to say, hey, can I play soccer? And he wouldn't let me. But then my senior year, I begged him again, and you know, I think he had enough of, you know, me begging. He said, go right ahead. And we had a great time. You know, it was the first time I played in a number of years. And, you know, when you go back to a sport that you played a lot growing up and you took some time off, it was just, you know, playing for the love of the game. And uh, we had a great team and we won our first 21 games. We were 21 and 0. And the only loss we had was to St. Lawrence in the NCAA Sweet 16s. So it was a great, it was a great run. It was a 21 and run season. And, you know, those guys, uh, you know, I had a chance to play one year with, but I, I still stay in touch with a lot of them today. That's awesome. Yes. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. What, uh, what do you attribute your success in coaching, taking from what you've learned uh, in your days, in your career, in your playing, right? You, you played multi sports. Kids don't do that anymore today. What do you What do you I think is the What do you think is the biggest difference? You know, I I think for me, um, you know, like I just touched on the fact that I did play so much soccer, and you know, growing up with a father that I had, you know, we played all sports. You know, I grew up in. Hicksville, Long Island with, you know, Marty Hughes and, you know, Robbie Scuderi and, you know, guys like that. And, you know, we played lacrosse, we played basketball, we played football, we played everything. You know, our parents, uh, my dad and, you know, Marty's dad would take our hockey equipment away from us at the end of the season and, you know, hide it from us and give it back to us, you know, in late August, Labor Day, say, all right, it's back to the rink. You know, and in between, you know, they, they gave us the baseball mitts and the lacrosse sticks and the soccer balls. And, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, you know, coming up that way, um, you get appreciation for, you know, you know, becoming an athlete. You know, you play those different sports and, you know, you get to develop different muscles and you just, you, you know, you also learn, you know, how to compete. And that's the biggest thing. You know, I think you and I, you know, we spent a, a lot of time talking about this. You know, I, I find that the players today, the hockey players today are, you know, tremendous with their skill level and, you know, their approach to, to working out in the weight room and, you know, how they are with nutrition. And they're, they're incredibly skilled. Uh, but, you know, I don't know if they really, you know, have the game management, you know, and, and, the, and the, the competitive streak that I think you get when, you know, you, you grow up playing, you know, in, in the sandlot and, 
you know, we used to play in the tennis courts and you didn't want to lose to the guys from the other part of the, of the town, you know, cause you didn't want to talk about it in school tomorrow at the lunch table. So you yeah. figured out the game and you figured out, you know, what it takes to win. And uh, I think that means a lot. I really do. You know, and I was fortunate again, you know, you know, you know, playing uh, in Hicksville and, you know, won a couple of high school championships and, you know, of course, my senior year, I was on New York Apple Corps, one of the first junior Apple Corps teams, and we won the national junior championship that year. And, you know, then I go on and, and go to college and won a national championship there. So really, honestly, Paul, I, I've been blessed to be a part of, um, you know, championship teams. And when you're a part of that, you know, you get used to it. And, you know, it, it's really not, you know, you know, reinventing the wheel. It's just, Hey, you know what? This is the path that I, I, I was able to experience that led to success and led to winning championships. And, you know, this is what we're going to do. And it works. And that translates into your coaching. Yes. I, I mean, you're, you've been very, very successful over the years. I mean, you have well over 225 wins in already in seven short years. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Pretty impressive. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Paul, like you, you and I work together and, you know, for me, it's it's the joke, you know, Paul and I always joke, I always say, you know, I'm running, you know, this Islander hockey club junior team, like it's the New York Islanders. And that's the thing, you know, and, and that's the mindset, you know, that's the mindset that, you know, I try to have each and every day. And I think, honestly, I think my players really feel that. And they know that, you know, I'm pretty passionate about, you know, going, going through the process of the year and, you know, getting better and, and, and ultimately, you know, trying to be there at the end to try to win a championship. So, you know, this year, you know, it was, uh, you know, it was an interesting year, too, with the two different teams. You know, I can, I can tell you a little about that if you want. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, the premier level, um, you know, I, I really, you know, I really enjoy working at the premier level. You know, that's a level that, you know, you're taking some players that, you know, if you look at all the different boxes that need to be checked off um, in order for a player to make it as a Division One player or a Division Three player, you know, usually the players that play premier level or missing maybe one or two boxes or three boxes um, and you get a collection of those guys and then you set forth each and every season um, to see how much better you can get those players and how much better you can get the team and you know this year I was pretty fortunate and pretty pretty blessed I had about six or seven kids um, come back from the year prior um, and they kind of knew the culture and they kind of knew you know the way we go about our business and they, they really helped you know set that mindset from the first day uh, and the team, the premier team, ended up winning the first 20 games of the season. Wow. Only until we went down to Florida, you know, where we went 0-3 and 1 down there. You know, the southern teams kind of, you know, punched us in the face, which was good. We needed it. Uh, but, you know, it was, uh, it was a good run. Um, and then, you know, we kind of regrouped the second half of the season. And then that team, um, you know, going into the playoffs was very hot. You know, they scored 17 goals and gave up none in their last two games before the, uh, you know, the COVID-19 canceled the playoffs. So I think they ended up winning 40 games. I think, our, including the playoffs, we were 40, um, maybe six and one or six and two. So it was a it was a really good run, you know, with that group of guys. Uh, NCDC team, you know, we we were the youngest team in the league this year. You know, we uh, we wanted to go younger. You know, we wanted to have a lot of old ones and old twos in the lineup. Um, and really, we were trying to see if we can, you know, get some of those guys Division One commitments. And that's kind of the reason why we went younger. Let me ask you a question. I, I don't mean to cut you off, but I, that's a good point. And I want people to really understand the difference, the mindset of, of, of going, you know, the NCDC being younger primarily than the premier guys. Yeah. Right? yeah. So oh, yeah. A lot of people don't understand that. And I want them to hear it from you. You know, how does that, you know, go through the process, you know, the evaluation of somebody like that? Yeah, and, and I'm going to say, you know, it was also, you know, kind of frustrating, too, um, on the flip side, you know, because, you know, there were some players on the premier team, like our top end premier players, they could be interchangeable with the bottom end NCDC players. They really can. You know, it's just, you know, it, it, the margin there between those, those players is very, very small. Um, but, you know, the, the top end guys, you know, the top end NCDC players, um, the younger players, um, you know, you know, the, the way the college game is going with the younger uh, commitments, you know, that, that we're seeing um, for the for the last 10 years. Um, you know, we, we wanted to go with younger kids that, you know, we felt that the Division One coaches, you know, kind of, you know, had them already on their radar screen. And, you know, we're giving those guys, you know, the opportunities to, to play at that level. 
Um, but you know, it's, uh, you know, it was a situation where, again, we, we, we kind of, we kind of got raided here, you know, at the end of the season, you know, the season ended and, you know, we, I guess we did a good job in a sense where, you know, the USHL and, you know, the BC team, the BCHL, you know, they're, they're coming and they want all our younger guys right now, you know, so it's, you know, it, it, it's a situation where I'd love for them to come back, but at the same time, if they have the opportunity to play in the USHL, you know, Hey, we did our job, you know, best right. luck and we're rooting for you, you know? Right. So. What's it, what do you think is the difference between uh, the NCDC and the NA? Um, you know what? I, I watched a considerable amount of um, North American Hockey League, you know, games this year because I really wanted to study it. I really wanted to see, you know, what it was all about. Um, I'll say this, and this is what the, also the feedback I got from a number of the pro guys and a number of the Division One guys that kind of saw the NCDC and then also the NA. The NA, I think, is a little bit older. You know, it's an older league. Um, it's a little bit heavier, you know, a little bit more physical, especially that Southern Division. You know, the teams down in Texas, you know, in the Southern Division, it's, you know, it's big, strong, physical, a lot of fighting. Um, it's an older league. You know, our NDC this past, this past season, man, it was a track meet. You know, we had, you know, really fast, skilled, you know, young forwards, you know, top to bottom in the entire league. So I, I think the difference, you know, I think is just, you know, the the skill and the speed, you know, um, you know, is I, I I thought up front was a little bit better, believe it or not, at the NC at the NCDC level, you know, where uh, the NA had heavier guys, you know, the older guys. I, I agree hundred percent. I, I, I equated to this. I, I always say the NA is a ground and pound league. Yeah. And the NCDC is is, is speed and finesse. That's perfect. That's a perfect analogy, and I would agree with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's got to be, you know, when you get the older guys on the premiere and the, on the top line, those interchangeable guys, then you got this 16 year old that's just a phenom, but yeah. he's right there at the third, fourth line. This older guy, there's got to be a lot of that going on, a lot of tension. I would think when you when you have such a program like yours that everybody is is moving in the right direction, you know. Yeah, I mean, one one thing I really I I you know I was proud of was. You know, actually, our two teams are close. Our two teams are close this year. Um, you know, our model is our premier team practices in the morning. Um, those guys are out of high school. So, you know, we practice, you know, 8, 8.30 in the morning till about 10. And then, you know, they're, they're working out or watching film. And they're usually done by 11 o'clock, um, where the NCDC team was in the afternoon over at Merrimack. Um, so we actually had guys that would skate sometimes, you know, two, twice a day. You know, we had some players where we would give them opportunities to skate in the morning and then go skate uh, afterwards up at the, uh, up at Merrimack with the NCDC. And then there were some NCDC guys that actually wanted to skate more and do some work with the premier guys, uh, in the morning. And, you know, they would go to each other's games and, you know, support each other. And we had a couple, a couple of, um, trips this year where we went together, you know, both teams on the bus and, you know, by the end it was, uh, it was, it was one, it was one. And that's what we wanted to accomplish. And I think we did it. Um, and, and I think, you know, if you look at the commitments, um, you know, we had 11 kids off the premier team or 12 kids off the premier team set to go to school. And we also have another 12 off the NCDC team that are going to schools. So that's 24 commitments, you know, from the two teams. And, um, you know, again, the, the, you know, the, the mindset, you know, Paul, going back to that mindset, I told the premier guys I wasn't going to change uh, anything. I was going to run their team the exact same way I was going to run the NCDC team. And I told the NCDC team we're running it like it's a pro team. So, you know, that's kind of, you know, what the players, you know, heard from day one. And, you know, I don't think we let that up. You know, we really made sure we, we backed that up each and every day. Awesome. That's awesome. Well, I, I'm very, uh, very excited uh, about what you're doing there. Uh, it's always fun to watch uh, your teams play. And, uh, and, and I'm happy about your success that you're having there. Great job. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you. Let's, Coach, how did you uh, how did you and Paul meet? Let's uh, let's talk. Let's go back and talk a little bit about how you guys met. <laughs> oh, and that, that, what, that'll probably be good for a laugh or at least uh, one or two. No, no, no. I was you know I was in um, I was in Palm Beach. And I think Paul might have been. Um, were you in Carolina? I think he was in Carolina. No, I, I was in space, space Coast. Oh, Space Coast. That's right. Yeah, Paul was in Space Coast, and you know I was impressed because Paul was just you know working his butt off and and recruiting and, and building you know good teams and. You know, we had an opening and, you know, it just so happened that, you know, he called me and, and the position was open. I was like, yeah, we don't need to talk to anybody else. You know, Paul, you're the guy. And 
Paul came right in and, and for two years, you know, we had a good run. We had a really good run. We had a lot of fun. You know, both teams uh, were winning a lot of hockey games and we had a lot of fun too. Like we had players that, you know, played for Paul the first year and then, you know, moved up to, to the, to the next team, uh, the, the team above them the, the second year. And it was just fun. It was a really fun working, uh, you know, atmosphere we had for a couple of years. And then you went to the, the Islanders in 2016. Yeah, I came up here in 2016. I just finished my fourth year up here. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So what is the uh, – and I – just because I know you and I know you don't ever stop, what, what, what's the – what's down the road? You got any – any? I know you want to go right to the top, but uh, 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 you any, know, any college uh, positions in the future? You know, I don't know. I thought maybe Long Island University would get you and me back together. <laughs> <laughs> back home and we could we can we can run that program considering we grew up right there um that'd be nice. That'd be nice. yeah it would be nice it would be nice i i, I don't know you know J jackson my uh my son's a freshman in high school you know he's got a few more years and he's always in eighth grade she'll be a freshman next year so you know my wife emily and i discussed you know at least uh you know we got to see our kids through to college and then you know once they're in school uh you know, we can have some uh, more freedom to, you know, maybe take some chances and, you know, see, you know, what opportunities might be out there. You know, I've kind of made some decisions, you know, with my career where I kind of put stability uh, ahead of anything else because of my young family. You know, I, I, I wasn't a guy that, you know, took those chances and took those risks and went after some jobs, you know, when my kids were younger, because I just, you know, I didn't want to see them moving around, you know, and right. I, staying in Florida for about 13 years and then obviously coming up here now for the last four. Have you ever coached your son before? Yeah, I did. You know, I did it down in Florida when they were uh, coming up the ranks. You know, I was part of that old four Alliance group yep. uh, when they were mites and squirts. And I worked with uh, um, Ryan Brindley and yep. Rafalski and we had a lot of fun. It was great. Um, and also I coached his tier two team down there. And then uh, two seasons ago, I, I did the U14s with him and, that was a little bit of a rocky uh, kind of year. You know, he was still at that age where he didn't really want to, you know, fully, uh, you know, absorb what dad was saying as coach. And I, you know, I, I, I kind of treat him uh, as number 22. You know, I don't treat him with the white gloves, you know. So it was very early in the season real quick. He was, uh, wasn't working hard. You know, he wasn't working hard in the game. And I sent him right to the showers. He was in the first period. And I, he, he gave up on a play and it cost a goal. And I said, okay, get off. You're done for the day. And everybody in the bench just immediately stopped and looked back and he skated across the ice. And, you know, we brought him back, I think a little bit later, but it sent the message, you know, sent the message to the parents. To the whole team, yeah. To the whole team that, hey, he's not going to treat his son any differently. And I think from then on, you know, Jack understands that. And, you know, now it's amazing. You know, we fast forward 24 months and, you know, it's, uh, he's a different, he's a different kid. He's really approaching the game the right way. You know, he's, he's eating clean, he's working out, he's running. And, you know, during this, you know, during this time where we're staying home, he's staying active and he's staying busy, which is good. Is he doing that on his own or are you having to you try to help him with it? Or is it a little, a little bit of a mixture of both? You, you know what? That's the thing I, I always said, and Paul and I talked about this too with the kids, you know, I tell the kids, when you can become your best coach, that's when you're really going to grow and develop as a player and develop as a person. And Jack, uh, you know, he, uh, he, he's figured this one out. You know, we, we put a weight, a, a nice little weight uh, room in our garage and, you know, he's in there, you know, lifting weights and he's got a program and he's running and you know what they, they used to be, Hey, you got to do this. Now it's just, you know, dad, I got to get after it. I got to go, I got to go run. I got to do my workout. So it's good. What, to What's his projection? What do, you, what do you think? I don't know. You know what? I don't know. He's, he's a skilled player. He sees the ice. He's a playmaker. He, uh, you know, he's got incredible hands. You know, the biggest knock on him was, you know, he's got to get grittier. He's got to get stronger and he's got to attack and get off the perimeter. He kind of reminds me of Mark Cherimetta. Remember Mark? We had Mark yeah. down at the beach and, you know, Mark could see the same things in Jack that, you know, I saw in Mark and, you know, it, it was later on that Mark really blossomed. And now Mark is going to go play at Ohio State next year. You know, he started off at U and went back to the USHL this past year, and he's set to go to Ohio State next year. And, and awesome. I think Jack, Jack's very similar to Mark. You know? Good, good. So, good. wait and see. Looking forward to see his, uh, his progression. It's yeah. Be exciting. Yeah. It's going to be good. What, uh, 
you know, being, you, you got involved with us uh, at Unleashing Your Profiles early uh, while well, we started to, to grow and expand our coaches directory and our profiles and all that kind of stuff. What do you think uh, do you see in the, in the value of what we have to offer all players, not just hockey players, not just your players, but um, the, the profile in general, do you, do you see the value in it for players out there? Yeah, tremendous value, tremendous value. I mean, the, the game today, you know, has exploded with the amount of players and just look where the players are coming from that make it. You know, you got players from South Florida and Carolina and, and Texas and all parts of the country are making it, you know, to the top. And you know, having this platform that you guys were able to put together, um, you know, I, I can take a look and see what's going on down in Carolina. You know, I can take a look and see what's going on in Virginia. And players, you know, can reach out to me. So I think it's brilliant. I think it's uh, – I, I was super excited when I saw that you guys had the relationship now with our league. Um, and and I, I, I think what you guys have done here is just going to continue to take off and, and, and get stronger, um, you know, as time goes on. So, you know, my hat's off to, to, to two of you guys. This is a fantastic thing that you guys put together here. Thank you. Yeah, I saw um, Coach the other day um, in a Facebook group. It sounded like it was a, a retired coach. He said he, he, had, he had formerly coached in D1 college and said he never once used a profile, you know, in, in his years of coaching. And that made sense. Sound like he had been retired. Um, but it said, you know, I've never once used a profile. Why would a kid ever need a profile? I can simply pick up the phone and call the coach and get all the information I need. What do you, I mean, you know, things have changed, obviously, from the way it used to be. Obviously, lots shifted online. But, you know, what, I'd be interested to get your take on that. Yeah, I, I think that's the old school. I, I, I think, you know, for the most part, that does still exist. Um, but I'll be honest, you know, I, I, I get on average this time of the year uh, anywhere from 15 to 25 emails. Um, and I look at the emails and some of them obviously come from your platform and I'll, I'll quickly click on it, take a look. And, you know, if something catches my eye, then it's like, OK, we're going to take the next step here. And I'll, I'll reach out and say, hey, you know what, you know, let, let's this is what we have going on. And, you know, I want to have you come up and, and take part in the camp and we can see from there, you know, re really where you stack up. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think for me, it makes things uh, a little bit easier in terms of, you know, finding, uh, you know, some, 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 some really good players that you might not have known about. So. That's right. And they that, was, that, was, your, oh, that was the purpose. That was the purpose of this when we started was to be able to get players in front of coaches that you normally would have never been able to see. Yeah, right? exactly. so it just creates that marriage that uh, makes everybody accessible. So I, yeah. I, I really like that a lot. Yeah. You know, again, the relationships go a long way, but this is uh, another element that's, you know, that, that good coaches. And I think any, anybody that really wants to be serious about it is going to, you know, is going to take serious and is going to, uh, you know, it's going to help them. It's going to help them get some good players. So. Well, absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, our enhanced profile is something that we, we talk about a lot uh, because of the disc player assessment that gives coaches a really in-depth uh, view of this player away from the rink or away from the field or whatever. Uh, that, uh, going back to your guy, Lane, that was talking about, you know, the old school, you know, the, the tools are just different now, right? So there's so much more information. Uh, and creating our profile, I wanted to create a, a one-stop shop. So I, I think adding the DISC player assessment uh, creates that, that value that gives you, Timmy, the, the opportunity to really go through this kid's profile. Is this the right fit for our culture? Yeah. Right? Am I looking for a leader? Am I looking for that kind of mentality? Well, you can see it right there on the chart. And yeah. uh, I think – that, you know, you okay. Well, we don't need him, and you can move on. You know, I, I, in college, I get to say I get emails all the time, and if there's no profile, I'm not going to spend nine, ten hours gathering information. Yeah, well, that, that brings up a good point. I was going to ask um, Coach Tim. You, you said you know something catches my eye. What is it that you know? You get a, you know a bunch of emails from players who are interested in your program. What things catch your eye, or what is it that you're actually looking for? You know the to help you say, yeah, I want to, you know, explore this a little bit more and maybe give us a little insight into your recruiting process. You've been a coach for a long time now, yeah. had a lot of success, obviously, and your success, you know, in your seasons 
obviously translates into the, the, the players that you get and how you develop them. So yeah. maybe walk us through a little bit your recruiting process from one season to the next. Yeah, sure. So what I do is, um, you know, when I'm looking at players, I, I kind of compare them to the players that I've had previously. And I can say to myself, okay, this kid can play, you know, a similar lo- a role of, you know, um, you know, Sila Claire. This kid can play a similar role to Chair Meta. And, you know, I look for the characteristics and tendencies that, you know, they may be showing at the time. And then I immediately can say, okay, he fits that spot. He fits that role. And, and, and that's what I do. And then when I'm watching film, um, I'll give you a perfect example. I had a kid send me something from Michigan. It was a Michigan hockey, high school hockey. And they got good high school hockey in Michigan. And, you know, I watched about three minutes of the kid's film and just saw the way that, you know, he was seeing the ice and making some passes and setting some things up. And I was like, wow, he's got some good hockey IQ. You know, he sees some things that, you know, I, I, I was surprised he actually saw what he saw. So that immediately, you know, you know, made me, you know, pick up the phone and follow up and say, hey, I just got this. And the kid was shocked. I think him and his dad were sitting there and it was like 10 o'clock at night and I'm calling at five and the dad's like, wow, we just sent this to you. But I mean, that's what it is. You know, like I'll, as soon as I get something on my phone and you guys know with the phones, you know, via email, you know, synced up, you know, you can get it and you take a quick look, you know, it can, it can happen very quickly. And that was an example. So and where was that, just as an example, where was that player coach? He was in Michigan. He was playing uh, at a Michigan high school. So you recruited a player from, from you know, where you're at in New Hampshire, New York from yeah. Michigan. And, and that whole process was basically through email and online. Yeah. He reached out to me. You know, I think he sent an email out to a few different coaches. I, I assume he would. Um, and I, I it was 10, 10 o'clock at night and I'm sitting on the recliner and I take a look and, I clicked on those little videos. It, it was a three or four minute video. And, you know, after about 45 seconds of seeing, you know, some of his highlights, it's like, wow. You know, then, you know, obviously you can check out his stats. You know, you go to, you know, some of the uh, different databases, you can check out his stats and sure enough, everything was matching up. And that's what then led me to call the kid right away and say, hey, you know, we, we want you here. You know, we want you with us. So, you know, that's an example of, you know, me, you know, taking advantage of, you know, you know, the kind of service that you guys offer to your players. So for those student athletes or players who are listening to this, you know, what coach just said is really important. If you are watching this on our YouTube video, um, you'll be able to see this as well. But on the profile, on Elite Junior Profiles, what coach was just mentioning is, number one, you can fill all this information out and put all this information right right in the hands of a coach. They don't have to go hunting for it, looking for it. Um, but then what he was saying is, you know, you've got this section here where you can put in your highlight video links. You can put links to your profiles, your previous season stats. Um, and yep. so that way, you know, if you've got a good complete profile, like Coach Paul was just talking about, and then you send a link to this profile in a simple email, like, you know, what Coach Tim was just talking about, you've, you've approached the coach, you've given the coach all the information, uh, that they might want or need at least to evaluate the relationship in a, in a, at least an initial way, a few links, maybe to a highlight video or some other stats and off you go. So and I think the, the, the underlying message there is don't be afraid to, to send an email to a coach. If you're interested, that's what you have to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You have to, you have to be proactive. You gotta be proactive. You know, you have to be, and this is your resume. This is everything. So load it up. Fill it up with all the information that you have about yourself so that coach doesn't have to go looking around for you, right? Yep. It's all right at the fingertips. And I'll, I'll take it a step further. You know, once the players come here and they're playing for us, um, you know, I, I tell the moms and the dads and the players, you know, you know, the reason why we have a pretty good track record of, of getting our placements is, you know, we, we sit down and we have our kids apply to the three or four schools um, you know, where I think, you know, would best, they could really fit in the best. Uh, and once they apply to the school, you know, then we'll call the, we'll call the coaching staff and say, Hey, you know, Johnny on my team has been very proactive. Like Paul just said, and he, he's taken the initiative. He's applied to your school. He's already gotten in and they're like, wow, okay, we're going to come out and we're, we're going to take a look. And, you know, sure enough, they come out and they make their decision, you know, based upon that. So I, I think that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing, Paul. You hit it on the nail. You know, players today, there's so many players out there, so many good hockey players out there that ones that are very proactive are, are the ones that are going to make it, the ones that are going to get the opportunities. So, you know, you got to be your best advocate, you know. What, what, what do you think, and, and I absolutely 100%, you have to be, because now there are so many more junior teams. Continually, yeah. the leagues are growing. 
right? So that what does that mean? That there's still only a few spots left uh, yeah. at the NCAA level, right? So now the trickle down theory is ACHA hockey is becoming extremely competitive, right? Yeah. So the, the mindset, you know, some of these guys have to understand is that uh, you have to be proactive. You got to you got to separate yourself from the masses because. There's a lot of good hockey players out there. I mean, you're gonna be you're gonna be good to play ACHA hockey. You're gonna be good to play at Liberty. You're gonna be good to play, you know, at Iowa State. You're gonna be good to play at you know some of these schools. I mean, the biggest thing ice hockey needs, quite honestly, is is, is expansion. You know, the NCAA. You know, hopefully, we'll be able to see the day. You know, in the next 10, 15 years, where you know we can get a Pac-12. You know, division. You know, we can get Oregon. And, USC, UCLA, Washington, those schools to, you know, have hockey programs, you know, because there's so many players out there and there's good players that, you know, can, can really fill those programs up. Um, we just talked about Long Island University. I mean, LA, that just came out of left field, but I mean, that's good. Everybody's quick to, to take a shot at it, but it's like, wow, I'm happy. You know, 20 years ago, here's a good story. 20 years ago, my freshman year, uh, I went to Iona College, you know, in the MAC Hockey League. And uh, my freshman year, 1998, we're playing a game against Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac. We're playing at East Haven Middle School, a Division I hockey game at East Haven Middle School. Let's fast forward now 20 years later. Quinnipiac's, what, top five in the country the last five, six years, and they're playing in a beautiful palace on campus. The point is you got to start somewhere, you know? That's right. Sorry. You know, we, we, we got to get some of these other schools. And even down south, you know, you're at Elon, which is a phenomenal academic school. You know, you know, I pray that Elon will go NCAA. You know, you got to get some of these schools down there, um, you know, Alabama and some of those big SEC schools. You know, that would be fantastic. Because, again, yeah. the supply is there. You know, the players are there across the country, and they just need the opportunities. They need the programs to exist. So hopefully someday we can see that. Well, I think to Paul's point, you know, I mean, you, you, about being proactive and, you know, um, like, like you were saying, Coach Tim, there's the numbers are there, but you look at the percentage of, high school athletes that, you know, depending on the sport, you know, that actually play NCAA division one, division two, or division three. And if we even throw ACHA in there for hockey, you know, let's just say even double that, you're still saying less than 25% of all eligible high school athletes, you know, in hockey are going to actually play, um, you know, their sport in college and hockey's actually second highest, you know, I mean, look at this, the numbers, baseball, seven and a half percent, basketball, three and a half percent. So, you know, the, there's a lot of student athletes competing for a very few spots. And I think that's where being proactive is really our, our message is, you know, to the student athletes is get involved, be proactive, fill out your resume, start reaching out to these coaches, get on their radar, and then do, yep. do the things you got to do, you know, season in and season out. Yeah, you're exactly right. And that, not only that, you know, ice hockey too, you know, if you think about it, you know, the spots now, you know, not only are you competing against players across the United States, but you have Canada and you have all of Europe, you know, you got Canada, Finland, Europe, yeah. Russia, and, you know, it's, it's a war, it's almost a world competition to, to get those spots in the collegiate, you know, level. So right. you don't right. see that in football, you know, you don't see guys from, uh, you know, Belarus or Latvia playing football, you know, but, <laughs> you know. And that's, that's actually a phenomenal point because these numbers here are only USA based, you know, USA high school athletes. Right. So, yep. you know, the actual numbers are actually probably well, significantly uh, ho hockey. Ho those numbers, you know, aren't accurate because of juniors, right? This is just strictly high school to NCAA, right? Now you got juniors in there and, and hockey is the only sport that has those gap years. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's, uh, it's a whole different animal, but uh, yeah. you know, the other sports, you can go right from high school to NCAA, right? But uh, you can't – it's very difficult for hockey because you're talking about 18-year-old going in against 24, 25-year-olds. Yeah. And against boys. And it's yeah. uh, very difficult to do. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, Coach Tim, when you're helping your players, obviously they've got goals at, at the premier NCDC level, whether it's yeah. to play, you know, NCAA, D3, D1, whatever their goal is. Besides developing them as a hockey player, what are you trying to help them do, um, you know, away from the ice in order to be able to, to reach their goal of playing in college? Yeah, I think that's the, the, the you know, that's a great question. And that's the, the biggest thing for me is, um, you know, over the years, I, I'm finding that I'm spending, 
you know, uh, more time and I'm enjoying more time, um, really fostering the importance of, you know, developing the person, you know, developing the person. And, you know, for me, I, I, I read two books. I read two books that I share with my teams. Um, the first one is called Season of Life. Um, it's, a, it's a Pulitzer Prize uh, winning book. And it just talks about the uh, importance of, uh, you know, relationships, you know, relationships, the, the true meaning, yeah, there it is right there. The true meaning of a meaningful life is how many relationships are you able to, uh, to really foster and have in your lifetime? You know, mm. you know, you know, being a man is being able to understand the importance of, you know, the word love and, you know, and, and being a good husband and a good father and a good son and a good brother. And, you know, that's something I, I, I start from day one with my team, you know, and that kind of builds the family uh, mindset that, you know, we want to have. Um, but again, I tell them the lessons that you're going to learn now are going to stay with you 15, 20 years from now. Um, and that's the first book I use. And then the second book is a book right here. It's called Tribal Leadership. Um, and Tribal Leadership really talks about the five different mindsets um, that any person can have at any time in life. And especially these are mindsets that you're going to find uh, when you get into the workplace. And, you know, I'll give you a quick 20 second summarization. The first mindset is, you know, I, I hate life. You know, I hate life. And unfortunately, there's some people out there that have that mindset and you got to be careful about those people. You got to be careful around them. Um, the second one is the, the mindset that my life stinks. You know, my life stinks because my coach is an idiot. My life stinks because, you know, my wife doesn't like me. My life stinks because my line mate won't pass me the puck. That's the second mindset. The third one is me, 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 me. You know, I'm the greatest. Everything is because of me. And that's bad. And unfortunately, our school system, you know, develops that mindset. And that's not good. You know, that's not good. You don't want to have that me mindset. You want to have the fourth mindset, which is the ability to see everything as us and we together, us and we together. And, you know, I tell my guys, you know, if we can get uh, all 25 of us to buy into us and we together, then and only then can we go to stage five. And stage five is simply making history, right? Stage five is the team at Apple that created the Macintosh or created the iPhone. Stage five is the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team that won the gold medal. You know, stage five is, you know, the team that wins the Super Bowl every year or the Stanley Cup. You know, you, you enter that, you make history, and, you know, that's because you got a collection of stage four people that – you know, are going to sacrifice everything they, 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 they are for, for the greater cause, which is the team. So I, I really spend, uh, you know, a lot of time, you know, trying to teach uh, th those important lessons, you know, through those two books to all my players. And, I, and again, I go back, you know, when I played junior hockey, uh, I, I played for a great coach, uh, Mike Odessa. And, you know, back in the, uh, in the late 90s before junior hockey exploded, you know, Coach Odessa had the, the top junior team, uh, you know, one of the top junior teams uh, in New England. And in fact, our year, we were just talking about this, you know, we went out and we beat the U.S. national development team. You know, we beat some of the USHL teams. You know, that's how strong of a hockey team, you know, he had, you know, based upon the players in New England. Uh, but he, he took a lot of time, you know, telling us that he wanted to develop us to be good men and, you know, good husbands and good fathers and, you know, you know good people. And I think that really stuck, uh, you know, struck home with me. And I think now I'm just kind of, you know, continuing that tradition and, you know, trying to pass that on to, uh, you know, to, to the kids each and every season. So when you're trying to build this, obviously, you know, if, if this is your goal each season going in, you're obviously looking for a certain type of character, personality, player that as you're recruiting them in, how are you? How are you evaluating those players? Because I'm sure the club like yours, you've always got more choices then you have roster spots. So you've got to make those hard decisions with this goal and outcome in mind of bringing together a team of individuals and, or a group of individuals uh, to be a team, you know, and to pull together. So how are you evaluating that up front to at least try and give yourself the best shot of having a, a full group of, of players that are all going to buy into us and we together? Yeah. Like I said, going back and, and, and trying to do as much research as you can on your, on your kids you know, again, and looking at what you guys just had on your platform, you know, from a coaching standpoint, going back and really you know, digging in and, and seeing and learning about the different behavioral, you know, you know, traits that this kid will say that he actually has, um, having an idea of, you know, what, what his makeup is. So when he does come to you, you can say, okay, you know, 
you know, he, he, he's, you know, he's already put on paper that he is this way. And you know, again, with our program, um, you know, we have a good benchmark. We have a good track record that, you know, the kids, uh, you know, want to be here and, you know, you know, from day one, you know, the, the returners from the previous season, you know, really do a good job in, in terms of helping to uh, continue the culture that has been established, you know, and again, if the players don't buy in and they don't, you know, fall in line, um, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to have fun. They're not going to really, you know, um, get, get a lot of our program and they, you know, they, they're going to wash out, but you know what, to be honest with you, we don't have many players that do wash out. You know, I mean, Paul would tell you, I'm very gun shy on uh, making trades and, and pulling triggers. You know, I, I, we're going to commit to a kid, you know, we're going to try to stay with them the entire season and try to, you know, really develop them and, and go through the ups and downs with them, you know? So, I mean, you know, again, it, it's, uh, it's something that we do, uh, you know, we don't just preach. We actually, you know, do put into practice and we do it early in the season. You know, you do it early in the season and it kind of sets the tone um, that we uh, want to carry out throughout the course of the year. Well, success breeds success, right? And, and as you guys are coming in to the program, they've seen, you know, through the years, you know, this is it, which is why they want to be there, right? Yeah. So uh, you already have that mindset that, uh, listen, this is the way we do things. And uh, if you're all in, it can help you. Yeah. You know? so, yeah. Uh, that's exciting, man. That's exciting. I, I'm really excited for you and your future and everything else that you got going on. Uh, let me ask you this before we let you go, Timmy, that one, one piece of advice for parents going through junior hockey and, and through the different steps. Or even at that U15, U16 level as they're approaching it, they know it's coming up because you've got your son there now at that age too. So, yeah, well, you know, U15 to juniors, what's, what do you got to say for parents? You know what? It's funny. Shaquille, I don't know if you guys see Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq, has a show on TV. And, you know, I just saw it last night. And he's got two boys that are basketball players. And, you know, he said it. He's like, you know, when I was in high school, you know, I, I wanted to stand out and I wanted to be the man. And I want my kids to understand that, you know. And the biggest thing is this, right? Be a hockey player. Be, be the best player that you can be. And, you know, it doesn't matter where you are, um, you know, if you go out and, and you show that, you let your playing do all your talking for you uh, each and every day, um, that's, that's what it's gonna, that's what it's gonna take to make it. And, and again, and, and since 2004, when I started to coach, I, I've seen kids from, you know, you know, Pembroke Pines, Florida and, and Coral Springs, Florida, you know, make it to the NHL. You know, you see kids from Raleigh, North Carolina, make it to the NHL. You're seeing kids, you know, from all over, uh, you know, the U.S. make it from, you know, non-traditional hockey markets. And it's just concentrate on, you know, today. Concentrate on today. You know, get the most out of what you can get out of this day. And then, you know, tomorrow do the same thing. Be consistent with your approach each and every day. And again, you know, don't get caught up in chasing you know, it's keeping up with the Joneses, you know, this kid's going there. So I got to go there. You know what, find a good coach, you know, find a good environment where, you know, the coach really wants to work with you and you can feel that passion. You can feel that energy towards you and, and just have fun, you know, work your butt off. And if you have fun, you know, good things are going to follow. And I've been saying that, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, since I played, you know, I want to do the two things you can control is your work ethic and how much fun you have. And if you do those two things every, every single day, good things are going to follow, regardless of where you are. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Timmy, we, we always appreciate uh, talking to you. Good luck to you uh, this coming season, everything going on. Uh, stay well, stay safe, stay well to the family for us, and, uh, and we will catch up with you down the road. I will. Thank you so much. This was uh, a lot of fun. You know, it breaks up the uh, the monotony of what, you know, we're all going through right now. So, again, I love what you guys are doing. I, I'm so happy that it's part of our league and, uh, you know, it's outstanding. So, you know, I'm a huge fan. And anything I can do yeah. to help you guys out, I'm there for you. Appreciate right, it, Coach. I'd wish you luck, but I don't think you're going to need it based on the outlast hour. I think you're going to have a great season. <laughs> Thanks, Lane. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thanks for your time. No Bye, problem. buddy. Be Thanks, good. Paul. I'll see you. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.